guys welcome back to my channel Simone here just excuse me if you if I sound very snotty because I have a very bad cold I hope you had a great Christmas and New Year and um, I hope that the New Year brings you everything that you really want um, today I'm going to be filming my December wrap up I can't quite believe it's the end of the year and we're into the next one how has that already happened I read 10 books this month, so let's get into talking about them. So the first book I read this month was Sisters by Danielle Steele. This book I gave a four star. Um, I really, really enjoyed this one. I actually found it to be very emotional. Um, it basically follows these four sisters who live all across the world and they do different things. And then they all come home for Thanksgiving and Christmas every year. So they've come home for Thanksgiving and um, to their parents' house and they're staying with them and they're all kind of getting to, like back in touch with each other and they're chatting. And then something really bad happens and then it's a case of them all having to club together and kind of look after each other. And this was so emotional. It really reminded me a lot of Daddy's Girls by Tasmina Perry. Um, I'll link the video below where I talked about books I've read over 600 pages. Um, where this book I mentioned but um, there was four sisters in both and it was the relationships between the four and there was a lot of similarities for me I found that they were quite similar I really really loved this book um, I gave it a five star and um, yeah it really started off my reading month really well the next book I read this month was Spectacles by Sue Perkins now I will link below a video that I did called Stand Up to the TBR which is a new series I've started where basically I go through the oldest books that I have shelved on my to be read shelf on Goodreads and I read the books that have been on there for the longest. So last month I read Truth Witch and um, I talked about that in my November wrap up so I shall link that below as well. And the first one of those, I've read a few of them this month for that um, challenge I guess. Um, and the first one was Spectacles by Sue Perkins. This was amazing. I'm so glad I read this book. I, if you don't know who Sue Perkins is, she is one of Mel and Sue from the Great British Bake Off. Um, she's a comedian. She's very funny. She's a sort of TV um, presenter, I guess you would say. Um, absolutely hilarious. I love her on telly and I just knew I was going to love this book and I really did. This is kind of like a memoir, I guess, but she sort of talks about certain things that have happened in her life and the relationships she has with her parents and her girlfriend and it's just wonderful. Um, she also talked about a lot of really important things like um, sexuality and you know having no money and things like that. Things that just really kind of brought to the forefront how she is in her real life and I absolutely adored this book. I truly did. Um, I gave this a five star obviously. Um, and I'm really glad that this challenge made me pick up this book. The next book I read was I Hunt Killers by Barry Liger, which is the first book in the Jasper Dent series. Now, I liked this book. I did give this book a four star and it would have been a five star. In fact, it was a five star throughout. I really liked it. But the ending for me let it down a lot. Um, let's just say I know that this book is definitely part of a series because it doesn't really end um, and you kind of are going to have to pick up the next one to find out. So basically this follows a boy named Jasper Dent who his father is, an, um, is a well-known serial killer and he is in, he's currently in prison um, but basically he during Jasper's childhood he taught him how to be a serial killer. So now he's in prison and murders start happening and it's a case of nature versus nurture is Jasper Dent going to become a serial killer like his father or can he stop that and he even has this sort of internal monologue where he's kind of not sure whether or not that's who he is and he's a bit worried that he's gonna he's sort of destined to become a serial killer and there's nothing he can do about it and that part of it I really liked um he did frustrate me quite a lot because I just wanted to slap him and just say come on like stop it um but I did really like this book like I said though the ending I read the ending um and then I reread the last like two chapters because I was like have I missed something like did this tell me who it was and I didn't notice or I didn't like find out the answer or I just didn't like I spread it too fast or something so I reread the last two chapters and no it didn't tell you the answer <laughs> Like, I think I'm going to have to read the next one to find that out. But like I said, I gave this a four star. It was it was, it was a good book. It was a good solid book. But I wish that there'd been more of a conclusion. The next book I read this month was The Lottery and Other Stories by Shirley Jackson. This is one of the modern classics um, editions. Um, and this book is absolutely beautiful. 
I hated every single minute of it. Um, I gave this book a one star, which I don't give books one stars very often, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't understand this book, so maybe it's kind of lost on me. I'm not entirely sure. Um, do let me know if you kind of liked this in the comments. But this is basically a series of short stories. Um, I think there are... So there are 26 short stories in this book and to be honest with you I think like maybe one or two of them I kind of thought had a point. Um, some of them I, when they ended I did not understand what it was trying to tell me or what, I don't understand and then the, the title story The Lottery was the last story in the book which always annoys me when books do that. I'm like if you want it to be the title story you need to put it at the start and just, you know give us the kind of taste of what it is you want me to read um and only that it was like the shortest one of the shortest stories in there and I was kind of like why is it the title story it doesn't make any sense to me um there was one story that was about race that I did understand and I thought was very interesting and well written the rest I wasn't a fan of so one star from me the next book I read this month was a reread and this is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I actually listened to this on audiobook. Um, I got this on Audible and I really enjoyed the audiobook actually. Although I will say I've read this before and I really really loved it and gave it five stars. This time I only gave it a four star and it wasn't just because of the audiobook but I think because of the audiobook it obviously talks through each line whereas when you read it sometimes I guess you can skip bits if you kind of get a bit bored. Some of there was a lot of kind of like talking about stuff that was kind of irrelevant or like she just went on and on and on about the same thing and I was a little bit irritated by some of it. Um, like her and Elizabeth and Mr Darcy have a conversation at one point that goes on for an entire chapter when it could have been said in like a line. So I mean I know that's kind of the point of the flowery language and it is beautiful language but it just I felt like it could have moved on quicker. Um, if you don't know what Pride and Prejudice is, which I'm guessing most people do, but it follows Elizabeth who is a is one of five sisters who lives with um, their parents and basically their mother is trying to marry them off to rich gentlemen and it's that kind of time of the... It's in the 19... When is it set actually? That's a very good question. It's set in like the 1700s, I think the late 1700s. Um, yeah, I really, I did like this like I said. Um, it was kind of interesting to reread and kind of look back at it again because I haven't read it in a really long time. I did like this and I gave it four star like I said but didn't love it as much as I did love it before. I actually think Emma is definitely my favourite um, Jane Austen book so far although I'm pretty sure they're the only two I've read so I, I mean I don't know until I read the others but I think Emma is definitely beating me, beating Pride and Prejudice for me. The next book I read this month was another one from the Stand Up to the TBR Challenge and this was Passenger by Alexander Brecken and this is the first book in the Passenger, I think it's a duology, I'm not sure if there's more to come but I know that there's two books out at the moment. I really liked this book, um, I don't usually read time travel novels very much, it's not normally my thing but I actually really really loved this one. This one is Etta who is about to perform in a violin concert and she's very good, uh, she's there with her tutor and her mum and she, something happens and suddenly she's in the 1700s on a ship and she meets this guy and now she's got to go and do something for this kind of rich gentleman and she doesn't really understand. It's a lot of time travel stuff like I said. Um, I found this really interesting and a lot of the times I find time travel novels really difficult to follow because they kind of jump all over the place but this one I really didn't. It was really well, really well written and just really well executed. I really loved this. I gave this a four star. Um, I would definitely say um, go into it kind of, I would say go into it blind. I don't think you need to know more information about the book. I really liked just kind of exploring and finding out what was going to happen because I don't think the synopsis really tells you a whole lot which I think is great actually. Um, I do want to read the next one in the series and I'm really glad I read this. Then I have another one from my sign up to the TBR list um, and this one I actually bought myself because my library did not have it um, and that is The Infection by Craig DeLui. This cover terrifies me um but yeah um this basically follows a group of six people who um are survivors after the infection has started now basically the infection started one day where about a fifth of the population suddenly died and then two days later they all came back to life and with the sole mission of spreading the infection and now there's like armies and 
all this stuff is happening people are getting killed these people are trying to infect other people like half of people like people there are very rarely people who have two people from the same family together and there's lots and lots of drama in series. I really really liked this book. I gave this a three star. I think the best thing about this book was the six main characters. I think they were all very very diverse, very very interesting and had di very different stories and kind of backgrounds and they, they all came together to try and fight this infection and I loved that. We found it really really interesting. Um, the only thing I didn't like so much was the actual kind of zombies were very generic. There wasn't anything completely different about them. At times it did just read like a kind of typical zombie novel. Um, but either way, I did like this book and I probably would would continue on with it in the future. So the next book I have is also a one star, even though I just said I don't really give one stars very often. But this was The Trial by Franz Kafka. I was really excited to read this book because it was an author I'd not heard too much about before. But I had what I had heard was very positive. Um, I did think that um, the storyline was an interesting one. It was basically about a man who um, wakes up one morning and he's been arrested and accused of a crime but not told what the crime is he's been accused of um, and basically he is allowed to go about his normal life but he has to follow certain rules so he has to turn up at certain places at certain times and he has to um, like with an impending trial basically and it's about kind of man's paranoia and how things happen and how not knowing is kind of one of those like how that affects people basically um i really did not like this book like i said i gave this a one star basically it follows like a sort of stream of consciousness i'm not sure if that's the word like the right use of that term but basically it just rattles on and on there are no paragraphs there are no like chapters <clears throat> it really wasn't for me it just kept babbling on about the same old rubbish and i just wasn't a fan so this is a no from me, I'm afraid. The penultimate book that I read this month um, was one that I keep being told to read and it's kind of one of those like big books that everyone's read and I hadn't. So now I finally have read it and that is The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. I gave this one a three star in the end. Um, I did like it. It was very generically dystopian though. I did find that there wasn't a lot about it that was different. Um, I predicted most of what was going to happen. Um, <sighs> nah it just was it was all right it was okay it's one of those books it's all right it just wasn't like anything special particularly i don't think i'm going to continue the series just because a lot of people have said that the second book is a lot worse and i think if it's a lot worse then i'm going to hate it because this one was just okay so it follows the main character who um is living in a world where aliens have come basically there's been four waves already um and the fifth wave is about to happen and they don't know when it's going to happen what it's going to be and they're kind of waiting for more news I guess. Um, like I said I wasn't a big fan so I don't think I'm going to continue reading this book series. And then the last book I read this month which I managed to squeeze in there just before the end of the month and that is The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt. This is like a really short book it's about 200 pages long and it really took me like a day to read. Um, this basically I realised as well that I've talked about this book before in other videos I can't remember which video so I'll see if I can link it below if I can find it. I think it was like one of my TBR videos I did a while ago. Um, I got the plot of this completely wrong. I said it was about these three children who'd, whose father had gone away to war and they were like waiting for him to come back. That's not the case at all. This is about three children. You have Bobby, also known as Roberta, um, Phyllis and Peter and they are a very well-to-do family. Um, their mum and dad um, have a lot of money and they live in this massive townhouse and then one day something happens. Their dad leaves and they all move to this tiny little cottage in the countryside where basically they are poor and so um they kind of have to deal with that while waiting for their dad to come home and in doing so the three children kind of get to know the railway and the people that work on the railway and it's about that story it's a really lovely story to be honest not a lot happens in it because it's one of those like family cozy comfy reads I guess like it's not gonna be like action-packed that's not kind of the point of it I did like this it was really sweet um and it was enjoyable to read and I gave this one a three star so that was the 10 books I read this month I realized none of the books I read this month were particularly Christmassy but I've said before I don't really read like based on 
the time of the year I'm not really a seasonal reader I just read whatever I want to read at the time so um yeah I hope that you have had like I said a lovely Christmas and a lovely new year and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know what your favorite book that you read this month was and leave a little comment down below to let me know if there's any videos you want me to do in the new year and I shall see you in my next video bye guys